Do you know we can create an aura like effect in Photoshop using a special blur filter? Yes, you heard it right, a blur filter. Today we are going to take up this image and turn it into something like this. Hello everyone, I'm Didi. Welcome back to Dexplorian. And for those who are here for the first time, this channel is all about designing in Photoshop and sharing the process. And along with that, we explore various tools, techniques and tips and tricks which will improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. The effect we are going to create today is called Abstract Blur Effect and as the name suggests, we'll be creating a blur but in a way which will appear like an abstract art. For your convenience, the video is divided into parts which are given here along with their timestamps. So without any further ado, let's get started. Create a canvas size of your choice and if you want to make an FO poster like me, then make sure the image resolution is high. And if you want to use the same image I am using today, you can get the download link in the description. We'll bring in the image and drop it onto the canvas and now we have to remove the background and for that I will be using the quick selection tool for selection of the subject. But you are free to use any selection tool for this purpose. I usually give a little amount of time in the background removal process and try to make it as precise and as perfect as possible and I will suggest you to do the same because it's gonna affect our end result. Do the select subject option gets the job done pretty well most of the time but in some cases I've noticed there are fringing or halos and sometimes there are color bleeding from the background which needs to be corrected manually. I'll not go into the details of this step because I have already made separate videos on these topics which you can find by clicking on the i button above. And after doing all the work, this is the result. Now we will position our subject wherever we want. I will be placing it at the center. Then we have to convert this layer into a smart object. Let's rename this layer as subject. We will also create a solid color adjustment layer, make it a dark color and place it below our subject layer and it will be our background. See how beautifully the masking is done. We will change the color of the background to white temporarily and create a duplicate copy of the subject layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J and work with the top subject layer. We will turn off the visibility of the second subject layer for the time being and before moving on to the next step, we will link the two subject layers. And now it's the time for, as I always say, star of today's show. Make sure the top subject layer is selected, we go to filter then blur gallery and click on path blur. You will notice a different workspace with different menus and tools and we are gonna play with these sliders here on the right. First we have to turn this checkbox center blur off and then hold this handle and drag it like this. But nothing much has changed isn't it? It will just wait a moment and by the way the arrow shows the direction of the blur. And now we increase the value of the speed by dragging the slider and you will start seeing the change. We then adjust the tapper slider. There are no set numbers here so play around and experiment. Then we'll adjust the endpoint speed slider. You might be thinking what's so different with the path blur. We have already created the same effect with motion blur filter also and I want to say you are exactly right. But we are not stopping here and there is more to path blur filter. Watch this, you see the dot on the arrow here, you can click and hold this anchor and move it like this and now see the difference. We can also add more anchors here by simply clicking once on the line and then move it and the blur is changed. And like this we can manipulate the path of the blur. Isn't it amazing? There are so many things we can create in Photoshop and I really enjoy creating something new every time and sharing it with you. And if you are also interested in them, you can subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. And now let's carry on on our path. Similarly, we can add as many handles as we want by just clicking and dragging and add anchors to them and we can create different path blurs for different areas of the subject. We have one more thing here, we will click on this edit blur shape checkbox and now we have two more controls on the handle. We will simply click and drag these to add more blur and change the directions. I am sure you got the idea and now I will be adding some more handles.
I'm done here and now we will click OK. This might take a little time depending on the system you are using. The more powerful your system, the faster it will work. So relax and wait for it to finish it up. And this is the final result. I will turn on the visibility of the original subject layer and put it at the top. Let's rename this layer as Blur1 and then select the subject layer and make another duplicate copy of it and call it Blur2. And I will be applying the path blur filter to this layer as well. I will be creating the blurs differently this time. I am done. You can either place the subject layer at the top or in between the blurs. It's totally up to you how you want it. And before moving on to the next step, I would really appreciate if you can hit the like button if of course you are finding this video helpful. I will change back the color of the solid color adjustment layer to black and now I will be adding a gradient map and clip it to the blur one layer by holding the alt or option key and clicking in between the layers so that it affects this layer only. Click here to open the gradient editor and click on this handle and then click here to change its color. I will select a shade of green. If you are not so familiar with the gradient map and want to learn more about it, I have a video for that. I would suggest you to watch that video and you can find the link in the description. I want the same gradient map on the blur 2 layer so what I will do is hold the alt or option key and click and drag the gradient map and place it just above the blur 2 layer and then clip it. I will click on reverse here and the color in the gradient map will be reversed and I think it looks better. I think placing the subject layer on top will look better. What do you say? You can do whatever best suits you. I will go with it and now we don't need the two gradient maps. So I will delete this one and select both the blur layers by holding the shift key and press ctrl or command G to group them together. I will rename the group as blur and then drag the gradient map outside the group and then clip it to the group. We'll be adding a layer mask to the subject layer and then take the brush tool, right click anywhere to open the brush settings and select the soft round brush. Press left or right square bracket keys to make the brush smaller or bigger. Change the foreground color to black by pressing the X key and paint on the edges of the subject like this to add a little bit of softness along the edges. I'm done with the subject and now we'll be adding some text and additional elements. For that we have to activate the text tool and click anywhere on the canvas to add the text and then double click to edit it. I'll be using the font called Poppins, it's free and available on Google Fonts. By the way I'll be providing the download links of all the resources I'm using today, do check out the description for them. I'll be placing the text like this. I will be adding some more text and for that I will be using the font nothing you could do. I really wonder sometimes how do they come up with these names, sometimes they are just out of this world. Next I am gonna add an image to use as a designed element which I have downloaded from pngwing.com. Right now it's not so visible. I will click and drag it and put it inside the blur group and now it's visible. Resize and rotate it a little bit. It seems to be a little too prominent so I will adjust its opacity to 50%. I think 45% will be better. And lastly I want to give the be good text an effect and for that I will be adding a layer mask to this layer and once again take the brush tool. Right click to open the brush settings and this time select a custom brush called DD Crack Brush. Don't be confused by the name, I haven't created it. I have downloaded it from brusheasy.com and I have also provided the download link in the description. It's a set of 6 high resolution brushes. I'll be using the third one and you can use whichever you like. Make sure the foreground color is black, resize the brush about the size of the text and then just click once. Not happy? Press Ctrl or Command Z to undo and click again and repeat until you are satisfied. 
This is fine for me and with this our poster is ready. Hope you like the poster. In our next video, we will be using the same path blur filter to create a very different effect. So stay tuned and do watch this video to learn more about the gradient map and the amazing liquify filter.